Hey, this is Seth with SethPerler.com. Good morning. Beautiful morning here. It's the end of summer. It might not look like summer because I got the hat on, but trust me, it's summer. I'm here in Colorado. <clears throat> and I want to talk about the new school year we got coming up. It's August. School around here starts around August 17th, August 22nd are the main start days for my students. And... As you know, I work with struggling students, right brain students, outside the box thinkers, um, kids that have different ways of approaching learning and thinking, and kids who often struggle in traditional schools. So I wanted to uh, touch base with you real quick and give you some tips. School's gonna come up really fast really really important for these students to have everything in place on day one what i like to do when i get my students during the summer before the school year starts about a week or two before i go through certain things with all my students to get them prepped so that they can really hit the ground running on day one i don't want them scrambling i don't want them looking for things or not being prepared um, they really need to feel grounded and stable. They need to have systems in place, and they need to be able to articulate those systems. They need to actually know what their systems are and why they have them. Now, I am not a fan of one-size-fits-all systems, so each student I work with, I tailor the systems to. By the way, when I say systems, I mean systems for backpacks, folders, managing supplies, managing papers, and what I call a sacred study space, which is a, a place in the home that is sacred where they can come to do their work, where they can think, stop distractions, sit down for periods of time, and focus as, be, as best they can. <clears throat> but I really put a lot of intention behind creating not only the systems, but the sacred study space, which is a system as well. Anyhow, I'll run through a couple of things that I do with these students. One thing that I do is we, as soon as you can get a copy of the calendar for the entire school year, the year-long calendar, you download it from the school's website. It's a one-page document. I print up about four of those documents. One of them I cut up into as small as I can, and I slap it into the planner, and I tape it into that planner. Another one I get them to post up in their bedroom on the wall. Another one goes on the refrigerator, and another one stays in the homework folder. Homework folder I usually do with even college students. A lot of my students, I streamline things, but for the homework folder, it's just one place to keep everything. And um, so I, I get those calendars out there. Another thing I do is I get them set up with their planner at the beginning of the year, whether they're using an electronic planner like a Google Calendar um, or whether they're actually using a paper planner. Now, what I do, I'm going to specifically talk about two paper planners. One is a big desk calendar, they're about that big, and the other one is the paper calendar that they stick in their backpack and take with them everywhere. It does not matter if they're in elementary, middle, high school, college, or graduate school. I do this with all my students. Elementary school, usually we aren't using a, a planner like this until about fourth or fifth grade. Everybody else, we do. Now. Oftentimes, middle schools and high schools will give out planners, which is a very nice gesture. However, for right brain disorganized kids that struggle in school, this, those school planners are typically horrible. And I'll tell you exactly why. For these kids, there's a lot of visual clutter in these books. The pages are different colors. There's a lot of famous quotes that are put off to the side. It's visually very distracting. There's a lot of decoration going on. So while it can look really nice, <clears throat> visually it's distracting. So you have to understand these kids. Okay, When they open the planner and see all this mess of clutter, it's hard for their brain, like I'm going to use the word systematize, to systematize in a way to see the structure of the planner. Okay, these kids are learning to develop a sense of time. It takes a long time to develop a sense of time. You develop a sense of time in a micro and macro, you develop a sense of time for seconds, minutes, hours, but also weeks, months, and years. 
so they're developing it and when they see all this clutter it's really hard for them to see the segmentations of time plus these planners are filled with other clutter like they're filled with a periodic table which could be great if they're in a class that uses a periodic table math formulas the school rules a whole bunch of pages the fact is even though these might be useful pages they never use them and they're in the way and they make it feel overwhelming so um the other thing is is that these planners are weekly planners okay so that means there are 36 weeks in a school year these kids have to manage 36 blocks of time the 180 days are broken up into 36 blocks of time 36 weeks it's more actually challenging for these kids to manage this. So what I do is I get them a simple black and white planner. It's about eight and a half by 11. You open it up and there's an entire calendar of one month. They have lines because these kids often need lines to, to just to keep it straight. I teach them the right shorthand with it to keep it very simple. Um, and it's one month at a time. Rip out all the pages that they don't need. You know, if they don't write notes in the notes section with all the blank line paper in the back of the planner, rip it out, get rid of it. Simplify it. Get it down to the essential 15 or so pages that you open up so it's month by month. Okay, and we dog ear the pages. So um, I get them prepped with that. And what I do is I take that school calendar. The sun is coming right up over the uh, mountain right here. Um, I take the, um, that one-page school calendar for the entire school year, and I go through the school year with the student, and we highlight out every single day that's off for the entire school year, Saturdays, Sundays, and every holiday. What happens when you go through this process is you'll notice that they really start to understand what the school year feels like. Just It takes about maybe a half hour to go through this process, but it's tremendously powerful, and they have a much better grasp of what's coming up in the school year. Everything that we can get in the planner, we get in the planner. Like I said, holidays, birthdays of relatives, anything that we can get in there, get it done right at the beginning of the school year, before day one. They walk in with a planner that they know how to use, that's easy, that's black and white, that's clear, that's simple, that systematizes their school year, and they know what's going on with it. They have ownership of it because they've worked with it already before the school year starts. Not a fan of three ring binders. Anyone who knows me knows this. For right brain kids, it's way too many details. They don't care to manage pieces of paper that are meaningless to them and spend a lot of time doing it. They need very simple systems. So before day one, I get them set up with you typically either an accordion folder or a very simple color coded folder system. So they have a red folder, red composition notebook, write really huge on the front and back of both of them, math, math math on the composition notebook, math on the back, write their name on both of them, and have those done. Um, I'll even take the composition notebooks and color, let's say we choose red for math, and color the edges of it with red, so that anytime they're looking for their math notebook, they can reach in their backpack and they're looking for not really a math notebook, but the color red, okay? Just makes it simpler, makes everything easier. I don't like spirals um, because the, the papers tend to rip out for these kids and they tend to get worn down and the metal starts to bend and poke things. So the composition notebooks is what I recommend. doesn't matter that you can't rip the pages out. Get one that's perforated or just rip the pages out when necessary. But So I get them set up with that. I get all their school supplies. I get their name on everything I possibly can before day one. Getting things lost or stolen is a huge problem. Typically it's lost, even though kids will oftentimes say somebody stole my ex. Um, if it doesn't have the name on it, it's, it's most likely never coming back. So get the name on everything. The backpack, every folder, every book, calculators, nice pens or pencils. Um, and I uh, also talk with them a lot about how the first couple of weeks they'll probably do really well and feel really strong and really enjoy it, but that they'll hit a wall. I really get very realistic with my students. Um, the first four to six weeks are critical for these students. It sets the pattern for the entire school year. So you want those first four to six weeks to be really strong. You really want to get good habits, good, good habits and coming home. Um, and one of the things that I recommend is when you come home, pull everything out of the backpack and at least get it out onto the table. That way it's there. It's a lot easier to start the homework when you got to start the homework. By the way, 
Just because there's homework doesn't mean it's valuable or meaningful homework. I'm not always a proponent of homework. In fact, I think that um, there, there's a lot of argument as to why students shouldn't have homework. It depends on the age and what's going on. But um, the point is, is that if something feels really off with homework and it feels really inappropriate and overwhelming and it's really interfering with family time and so on and so forth, listen to that and address that issue. Figure out what's going on. So I think that's about it. I'm going to wrap it up here. I hope you're doing awesome. Again, school is starting right around the corner. What you want to do, however it looks, is get everything in place. All the textbooks bought, the planner bought, the planner filled out properly, all the materials you need, the folders set up, systems for everything, and you want the student to be able to articulate what their systems are before day one so that they can go in there really have a strong grounded idea of what's going on and move on with their school year get a good start in these first four to six weeks feel solid and then hopefully have a good rest of the school year one other tip i'm going to talk about the dip the dip happens after about six weeks of the school year here's what happens the students are doing fine everything looks fine everything seems fine and then all of a sudden, a grade or a progress report or a grade card or something happens and you see a zero or an F or there's some big red flag right at about six weeks. And then all of a sudden, there are 20 red flags. So it happens very fast. And then the rest of the school year is spent swimming upstream. Not fun. So again, set the tone the first four to six weeks. It's worth the extra investment in time energy and creating great strong systems that they can articulate have an awesome school year you got this you rock i'll talk to you later take care